So I screwed up, and this is a pretty big screw up. This is a brand new Twitter C6. So it's a Chinese road frame I was putting together for another video. I had run several DI2 wires down around the bottom bracket. I wanted to make sure I had enough clearance. So I took a brand new external bottom bracket and I threaded it in on the drive side. It went in just fine. I threaded it all the way in by hand and then I used a wrench to snug it up at the end. When I went to remove the bottom bracket, it backed out about a quarter turn and then it got really stiff. So I thought, oh no, and I threaded it back in. It went back in just fine. Then when I tried to back it out, it made it about an eighth of a turn and then it seized up and it wouldn't come out and it wouldn't go in. What I should have done is taken and cut the shell of the bottom bracket apart with a hacksaw and then drifted it out with a punch and saved those threads. That's not what I did. What I did is I took my impact and I put my bottom bracket wrench in it and I ran the bottom bracket in and out several times until it came out. I was hoping I'd have a little bit of thread damage, but I wasn't so lucky. I had a lot of thread damage. So when it came out, it was missing all the threads from the last quarter inch. The frame was in worse shape. All of the bottom bracket threads were gone. They weren't just messed up, they were completely gone. So in the matter of about 30 seconds, I had completely ruined this frame. So I started thinking about ways I could fix it. And I came up with a number of ways that I could fix the damaged threads none of which actually would be feasible. They wouldn't work, but I came up with a number of ways. And then I came up with the way I actually did fix it. And I haven't seen anybody do this on the internet, at least in the research I did. So hopefully this is something you haven't seen before. If you're interested in seeing what I didn't do to fix this, and then ultimately what I did do, stay tuned, let's get started. The first thing I tried or I wanted to try was to chase the threads and see if a new bottom bracket would engage. Looking at this bottom bracket that came out though, the threads are completely wiped out. There's nothing here to even chase. So a BSA English threaded tap isn't gonna do anything but waste money. So then I thought, well, I do have a mill, maybe I could bore that bottom bracket out and I could thread it for Italian threads. So I would bore it out and I would tap it with an Italian tap for the larger bottom bracket. Unfortunately, I went looking for an Italian threaded bottom bracket tool and you can't buy the Italian threaded tool. You have to buy the tool with the English threaded taps and then buy separate Italian taps. When that's all said and done, that runs about 550 bucks. And that's if you can find the Italian taps. They were sold out everywhere I looked. So $550 on a gamble that this might work. I mean, it would probably work, but $550 well exceeds the cost of that frame. I could buy a frame and a half for that price. And I don't think I'd ever have another use for an Italian bottom bracket threading tool. So taps and retapping that bottom bracket or that shell are just, they're not feasible. So then I thought, well, maybe I'll get one of these thread together bottom brackets. So the next size up from an English threaded bottom bracket is the BB90 standard. Unfortunately, the BB90, the 90 part in that name means that that needs a shell width of 90 millimeters. The shell width on that bike is only 68. So that's 22 millimeters difference. I thought, well, maybe I can make it work and use spacers. But what killed that idea is the crank. So the crank axle on Shimano cranks. You can see where the bearings ride. This is 90 millimeters apart. So that you can install this without it being an absolute bear, Shimano actually reduces diameter right here. The distance where that necks down is greater than 68. So even if I got this down to 68 and I use spacers, these bearings would end up riding on this narrower section and the crank would wobble. So the BB90 is out. So then I thought, well, we'll go for the next size up. So the next size up is the BB86. That's got a 41 millimeter diameter shell. So it's designed to fit inside a 41 millimeter hole. The bottom bracket shell on that frame is only 44. So if I took that bottom bracket shell and I bored it out so this would fit, the wall thickness on that shell would only be one and a half millimeters way too thin for a bottom bracket shell. So that's out as well. So that's all the options I had at hand. So then I get to thinking, well, 
what if I would sleeve it? To remove those damaged threads and open up the bottom bracket so that a sleeve will fit inside, I'm gonna use the boring head in my milling machine. I clamped the frame to the table and I took measurements on the inside of the bottom bracket where it hadn't been threaded. I aligned it so that it was perfectly square to the table. I then adjusted my boring head out to a diameter slightly larger than the damaged threads. I really took my time boring out the bottom bracket shell. I did it in multiple passes so I didn't remove too much material. Now that I've got the bottom bracket board out for a new sleeve, I need to make the sleeve. I have this old Trek frame that has a cracked head tube. I was going to try and repair it, but I need it for this more. So I use my Sawzall and I cut out its bottom bracket shell. That left a really rough surface, so I mounted it in my drill press and I used a half inch end mill to remove as much excess material as I could. Because I'm going to mount this in the lathe, I need to get it as round as I can. So I use my belt sander to remove any remaining material, get it as round as I could get it. I then mounted it in the lathe and I turned down until I had a good consistent finish. To make sure it was as centered as possible, I used a dial indicator to measure the runout. This dial indicator reads in microns. The best I could do was about a 40 micron swing, which I think is pretty good. So when I was happy with how well centered the shell was in the lathe, I turned it down to final dimension. I bored the frame out to 1.4934 inches. To get that one and a half thousandths interference fit I was looking for, I turned the sleeve down to a final diameter of 1.4950 inches. Getting this sleeve perfectly aligned into the frame when I press it in is critical. I didn't want to just rely on me getting it straight and square before I pressed it in. So I actually sized the two sides of the bottom bracket shell slightly different. I sized the right hand a thousandths of an inch smaller. So basically I've got a step design. When I press it in, both sides still have a 1.5 thousandths interference fit. But because the drive side is slightly smaller, I can insert it in the frame halfway. And then when I press it in, I'll get my interference fit, but I will also know that it's properly aligned. I inserted the sleeve into the frame and I used my hydraulic press to press it in place. To make sure this thing never comes out, I used a little bit of Loctite 648. So this is a retaining compound. I applied some to both sides of the bottom bracket so that when they press together, it'll lock it in place. The press went really well. The fit was perfect. It pressed right in, but just with the right amount of force. So here's a look at how the sleeve turned out. I cleaned it up after I installed it with a scotch brite pad just to make sure that it was clean. And then I threaded in a bottom bracket to make sure it fit. So that's the approach I used to fix the damaged bottom bracket threads on this frame. I really wish I hadn't damaged them in the first place, but since it happened, I think this was a good way to repair them. I think this is gonna last the life of the bike so when this thing is thrown away, it's not going to be because of my bottom bracket repair. But I want to know what you guys think. Is there some obvious way to fix this that I just completely missed? Or do you think that this repair was the way to go? Let me know in the comments section. I do look forward to reading what you guys think and how you would have approached this. So that's it for today's video. Until next time, I'll see you later.